Hi everyone, so today we are going to talk about analysis of variance, ANOVA. So these are the key points from the last lecture uh, about inferences for regression. Uh, we uh, went through the assumptions and conditions and also uh, the standard error for the beta, beta coefficient. And also uh, we talked about hypothesis test for beta coefficients and also 95 confidence interval for beta and also uh, the for each predicted value, we talked about the standard error of the mean predicted. So today we are going to start with uh, this example, washing hands and bacteria colonies. So the question is how effective is washing hands with different types of soap in eliminating bacteria? Uh, we are going to compare four different methods. One is water only and regular soap, antibacterial uh, soap, and spraying hands with antibacterial spray. It's alcohol. So there are four different methods, and these are the number of bacterial colonies from uh, each observation. So uh, each row is an observation, and this is the box plot for this uh, data. And the question we want to answer is, are there differences in, so across these four groups? And we need some formal, formal tests for that, and ANOVA is the right method for that. Uh, before going into the actual test, we want to talk about the intuitions in testing whether the means of several uh, groups are equal. So if you see these two graphs, uh, which one does seem to have same versus different means? So uh, I would say this seems to have the same means and this has different means. But the mean value in both figures are actually the same. And why do they look different? It's really because of the variance. So the variation within each group uh, in this second figure, uh, the variation within each group is so small compared to the variation between uh, groups. So therefore, the differences between the means really stand out. So to answer the question about uh, whether these groups have the same or different means, we need to compare the differences between groups with the variation within the groups. Okay? So that's basically the F-test, how we can compare the differences between and within groups. So our goal here is to compare two variances, one for between group and one for within group. So we use the fact we learned in a previous lecture for quantitative data, sample, let's say sample mean is a Y bar, and mean of Y bar equals population parameter mu. This is the mean of sampling distribution. The standard deviation of sampling distribution is the population parameter sigma divided by uh, square root of n. Therefore, we can calculate sigma in two different methods and compare, uh, one using this y bar that is between and the other using all the data that is within. These are y bar 37.5 for alcohol spray and 92.5 for ABS and 106 for soap and 117 for water. We can treat each group as a, each sample, right? Sample with the same mean. And then and the population level variance or standard deviation is going to be standard deviation of y bar if they, they are same times square root of n. This is standard deviation of the group, so sigma. Uh, and square of this is the population level variance. And if we use all the data, uh, we can calculate the pooled variance or pooled standard deviation. And in this way, we can also calculate the sigma square. So this variance of y bar times n is uh, the between mean square, treatment mean square. Basically, the population level variance calculated based on the difference across groups. And uh, vari pooled variance is within mean square error, uh, error mean square. Uh, these are different terms for the same thing. And this is the sigma square group level, population levels variance estimated with the, all the data. We will use the ratio of these two, the between mean square or treatment mean square divided by the within mean square as a test. So for the hypothesis testing, null hypothesis will be mean of four groups are same. Mu1 equals mu2, mu3, mu4. That is a group mu, so it's group mean is the same. And therefore, if this is true, uh, this should be same. If each group has the same mean, the variance calculated based on y bar should be same with the actual group level sigma, right? 
so they should be 1. And this ratio follows F distribution. So F distribution depends on two degrees of freedom, numerator and denominator. The numerator degree of freedom is from MST, treatment mean square. So uh, that is K minus 1. Here, K is the number of groups. And denominator, uh, the F is from MSE, uh, mean square error, and that is K times M minus 1. That is M minus K. So this is total number, sample size, minus K, group number. So in the example data, we had uh, four groups. So therefore, uh, the F1 is 3, and we had 32 samples. So the DF2 equals 28. And F test is one tailed test for the ratio. Because this ratio is always positive, this is one tailed test. This is also known as analysis of variance, ANOVA. It's a really famous and popular test. This is called ANOVA table and has a long history, nearly a century. And we are going to learn how to read this ANOVA table. So the first row is mean squared between, MST. And this is what we talked about, population level variance estimated with the sample mean, group mean. Okay, And this is the pooled variance based on all data. And this is the DF, K minus 1. This is M minus K. But we, we haven't talked about this. What is the sum of squares? We are going to talk about this in a minute. And when we know the, the, these two DF's values, uh, this is DF numerator and this is DF denominator, or we can read this F table and then we can get this critical F value for uh, 5%, that is 2.947. So here we are going to learn about how to calculate this sum of squares. And it's a little bit complicated but not really difficult. You will be able to understand what's going on. So we can re-express the data using this equation, yij. This is the data and mu j is the group mean and epsilon ij is the error after uh, removing the group mean. So the null hypothesis is mu1 equals mu2, mu3 and so on. But actually mu j is a, could be different from mu, right? And then the difference can be expressed like tau j, where tau j is the deviation from the great mean. So mu is a great mean, mean of mean. And we can rewrite our null hypothesis equals tau1 equals tau2 equals and so on. If this is the same, this should be true. But there should be error, right? And tau j hat equals yj bar minus y. This is gram mean. And this is the, the mean of observed group mean. And epsilon ij equals yij, actual data, minus group mean. Okay, so these are all true. And then we can re-express uh, the yij using these values. So this is a gram mean plus tau j hat difference between this group mean and grand mean plus uh, the each data point from the group mean. Okay, this is mu and this is tau j and this is epsilon ij. As we talked about above, this is mu j. Okay. So basically, we deconstruct the yij using gram mean plus treatment effect plus residual. So this is the equation we just talked about. And I'm going to reiterate this equation using the actual data. So this is yij observation. Each number is yij. And this is group mean, treatment means. And this is gram mean. So if we just mean everything, get the mean of the all the data, that is 88.25. We can calculate the difference between the group mean and gram mean by subtracting this from this. Uh, and that becomes minus 50.75. And we can subtract this, this from this. And then that is 4.25. And then subtract this from this, uh, that becomes this, and so on. We can also calculate the, the difference between data and the group mean. So this and this. Okay, So that is 51 minus 37.5 is uh, 13.5. And then this subtract this is this and so on. And 70 minus 92.5 is this. And we can express this observation is gram mean plus treatment effect plus residuals. The sum of squared of all these values this treatment effect, that is the treatment sum of square, this one. 
calculate sum of squares of all these values, these residual values, that is error sum of squares. Okay, so this is this value, this is this value. And given that we have degree of freedom, if we divide this by this df, degrees of freedom, uh, we can get the mean square error. Uh, so mean square treatment becomes uh, this divided by this, this that's that, and this divided by this is that. So the f ratio is the ratio between uh, this mean square t and mean square error. And then we can test whether this f test is surprising or not using p value. There are assumptions and conditions. Uh, one is independence assumption. Groups must be independent of each other. And data within each treatment group must be independent. So this is about observation and this is about group. But it's really hard to uh, make sure they are independent and therefore uh, we are okay with this randomization condition as always. And uh, we have another assumption that is equal variance assumption. Uh, each group has to have similar spread. So using the residual plot, we can plot the residuals after removing the group mean and then we'll see the spreads are similar or not across groups. And also we have normal population assumption. There's a nearly normal condition across groups. We can use the normal probability plot using all the residuals. But this ANOVA is an omnibus test similar to chi-square, so we don't know which group is really different from which group. So for that, so we can use the pooled t-test that we learned before, but we need a little tweaks. In this case, we are not using the standard deviation for each group. We are using the standard deviation calculated based on the whole group, and degree of freedom is n minus k here. Otherwise, it's the same. So why we are doing this? Because we have more than two groups, so pull the standard deviation based on the whole group is better estimate than uh, this only uh, this weighted mean of the uh, two groups uh, standard deviation. And degree of freedom is n minus k because we have groups uh, we are using n minus k. Otherwise, it's the same. Therefore, uh, for example, if we want to compare water only uh, with uh, antibacterial uh, soap. Uh, the null hypothesis is going to be there is no difference and standard error will be uh, this. So similar to this but as pulled is it a little bit differently uh, calculated. And degree of freedom is a little different but basically same. So this is two group case and this is multi group case. Because we are doing multiple comparisons because we for example if we have the four groups we, are, we can do many different types of comparisons, right? And therefore, we have to correct uh, for the multiple comparisons. If we do multiple tests, the error rate adds up. When alpha is 0.05, if we have 10 tests, the error rate will be 1 minus, uh, 1 minus 0.05 in, uh, to the 10. That is almost half, 0.4013. So that's not ideal. We still want to control the total error rate under alpha. That's we call family-wise error rate. So we have a family of tests and therefore we want to control our error rate uh, for the family level. So there are many methods to control family-wise error rate under alpha and the most popular one is Bonferroni. That is simply uh, divided by the number of tests. Uh, it's based on this Boole's inequality. So 1 minus 1 minus alpha each test to the m uh, is smaller then the maximum value will be this. Therefore, if we divide the group level alpha that we want divided by uh, the, the, the number of tests, that will be the alpha for each test. So for example, if we want to keep our family-wise error rate as a 0.05, and then if we have the 10 tests, uh, it could be 0.005 for uh, each test. So that's it for today's lecture. Don't forget to solve the quiz and see you in the class. Bye.